Is it hot in here or is it just this game? Tonight, Rolling with the Beard, we're reviewing Heat. Heat Pedal to the Metal is a car driven racing game. Maybe you think Flame Row, but with engines? Here we have the table set up for three daredevils ready to burn some rubber. The winner will be the player who crosses the finish line first after completing the predetermined set of rounds. Uh, players on their turn will first choose if they want to shift up or shift down. They can shift up or down one space without any penalty. Uh, players will then take a number of cards equal to the gear that they're in. So if you're in first gear, you can play one card. Second gear, you can play two cards. Players will simultaneously pick those. Once all players have chosen their cards, they then reveal them. Blah! And then they move their car around the board equal to the sum of the cards. Here I played a nine, so I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they were so kind, they put little numbers on the side of the board, so it really makes moving around the board a lot faster, so you don't have to count each space like a goon like I just did. And then once all players have done that, looking at their handy dandy player board to see if they triggered any of these special events that occur during one's turn, such as uh, slipstreaming by stopping beside or directly behind another player, or if they were in last place, you get a little boost. After a player has checked to see if they need to resolve any of those events, they can then discard any of the cards from their hand, as long as they don't have this little trash icon with an X through it. Uh, then they draw back up to their hand of seven cards, rinse and repeat. Uh, the gameplay in this game is quite fast. It almost actually mimics a race. Simple enough, right? I know what you're thinking. Beard, why is this game called Heat? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you why. Because Heat is a bizarre resource in this game. It clogs up your hand, but sometimes you really need to push the envelope and take those risks of clogging up your hand in order to finish first. Um, and Heat is one of those cards with the trash can and the X on it, so you can't just easily discard it at the end of your turn, you have to generate the cooling symbols, like the ones on your first and second gear. So sometimes when you've been pushing the envelope too much, too much pedal to the metal, you'll have to slow down a little bit to generate these coolings to get rid of the heat, put it back in your engine that has been clogging your hand. So that was a very quick overview of heat. <laughs> Man, this game is amazing. Uh, the components are superb. It, some of the best components out there, Days of Wonder just did a fabulous job on this. Um, the art is amazing. The more time you spend with the game too, you start to notice all these little touches like each player's player board, uh, the dash on the car, each one has its own different little lucky charm. And there are so many cards. There's so many cards because you can do this optional where you build your own car uh, with this pretty easy drafting system at the beginning of each race. and uh, it really adds a lot of replay value to it because you have a little more ownership in your actual vehicle there. Um, but you don't have to play with it. The game is fine just playing it vanilla out of the box. Now, does this game replace Flam Row? Uh, that is a quick, hard no. It does not replace it. Is it better than Flam Row? Yeah, I think it is a better game. But there is a special time and place um, that Flam Row is just a little easier to play, a little easier to teach, and you can just get going and have in what my opinion is just as good of a time, uh, if not maybe a better time because it's a little less serious. But with that being said though, Heat is a better game in my opinion, and I do enjoy it just as much. Um, I'm definitely keeping both of these games. Uh, there's certainly room for both of them in one's collection. Uh, they both scratch a similar itch, but I feel that there are differences enough that it warrants keeping both. But Heat offers a lot more than Flam Row does. Heat will allow you to build your own cars at the beginning, and even the, the NPC racers. Uh, so if you're playing with three players and you feel like the track is a little bare with just three players, there's a very simple streamlined automated card deck thing that you can use uh, to have other cars on the track and it works really really well it's much simpler than one thought it would be um, you can even play the game solo which is kind of mind-bottling <laughs> um, because you know here you can actually enjoy a racing game by yourself um, there's also the legendary mode where you can uh, do a race of, I think it's you race all four maps and you do four races and you get points and whoever has the most points at the end of all four uh, wins. It is just a fantastic game. Uh, one of the downsides though is because it comes with so much content, uh, the price tag is a little hefty. I don't recall exactly what it was, but I do know that the added cost of sleeving the game, which 
I sleeved mine was I think seven packs maybe of sleeves and that you know three bucks a pack you know it kind of adds up with the price of the game you're, you're starting to climb up there um, definitely in that upper cost of what I think a board game should be uh, price wise but I feel like the investment is worth it because it is such a great game and uh, it doesn't outstay its welcome. The races feel fast. Um, the teach isn't all that bad as long as one person at the table knows how to play the game, the ins and outs of it, they can kind of orchestrate the game. And to be honest, if everyone just sort of starts and then plays you can probably do a race or at least one lap in maybe 30 minutes and then if players feel necessary you could just restart and you know you, you really have your bearings then and you're ready to burn some rubber in the box the box is wonderful the insert is fantastic they took that in consideration and the insert allows for all the cards to fit back in their sleeves uh, there's little places for all the race cards cars uh, there's even room for what i suspect should be some expansions more cars maybe definitely more maps i'm sure they'll come out with more maps um and speaking of maps or tracks uh they do all kind of feel similar i feel um it does suggest that you do the usa track first uh really i don't think the italy track is that much more difficult there's just a few more turns in it uh or in a fewer straightaways well actually there's one big long straightaway at the end but in conclusion this game is amazing it feels like a race there's tons of components that come with it definitely worth the money definitely check it out it's staying in the beards collection and if you enjoyed this episode and it entertaining or informative of all please consider clicking that subscribe button and leave a comment down below on maybe what game i should cover next anyways thanks for watching another episode of rowing with the beard